Joining us today is Jonathan Nostrand, founder of the Ivy Personal Assistant Alarm Clock. The name Ivy is short for Interactive Voice. The latest model, the Ivy Sleek, has been dubbed the Next Generation Smart Alarm Clock. The Ivy Sleek is capable of answering questions, obeying commands, and controlling other internet connected devices. The Ivy Sleek is the third generation of Ivy Personal Companions and the smartest of its predecessors. To bring this part of to bring this product to market, Jonathan and his team turned a Kickstarter over the summer where their product was received with great enthusiasm. Their campaign was able to raise over $150,000, which was significantly greater than their initial goal of $40,000. Jonathan, thank you so much for being here with us today. You're welcome. How's everything going over there? Yeah. Good, yeah. good. So we'll just jump right into it. Um, Let's start off by talking a little bit about the company itself. When did you first start the company? Uh, we started in uh, January 2011. But we, uh, we have actually been making voice activated alarm clocks since uh, November of 2008. Okay. When was the first Ivy created? The first Ivy was launched in, I believe it was June of 2011. We launched it with uh, Hamburger Schlemmer and Brookstone, and mm. it was just a just a voice activated talking alarm clock. Gotcha, gotcha. So, what would you say got you interested in the the smart home technology? Well, I, I our vision the whole time, even when we were just creating these voice activated clocks, was to take just the experience of talking to the device and having the device talk back to you to the next level. And so it naturally kind of fell into the smart home category because in order to accomplish that, well, we know we needed to add Wi-Fi and mm -hmm. some other more sophisticated technology in the cloud and uh, on the back end. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it just naturally fell into this the smart home category mm -hmm. uh, because it's just such a powerful function that I maybe can control other devices. Gotcha. So, so when did when did you actually start developing the Ivy Sleek? Um, we actually have been working on, on it um, a couple years before that. We we actually failed a couple times. We tried to bring it to CES and we couldn't. And finally assembled the uh, the correct team and and, um, and launched it. So on, on actually just that model that you're looking at, we had only been working on it for about a year. Mm -hmm. um, and we started it. We really started getting development going in 2012. Okay. Uh, but we when I said failed, meaning we we had some other concepts that we were trying to bring to market, and uh, it just didn't work. So this this one finally finally did the work. So. We, uh, you know, we saw Kickstarter as a good way to, to, to launch it. Right, right. So, great. That brings us right into a uh, discussion about the Kickstarter campaign. Um, I know you guys have developed and produced two other products in the past. And uh, so why did you decide to launch the Ivy Sleep through Kickstarter? Um, the reason was it, is, is Kickstarter is just such a, a powerful platform. Yeah, and it's a great way to introduce new hardware mm -hmm. um, devices to the market. See it as a as a litmus test to see if this is if this item is really palatable for the, the mass market. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and although Kickstarter still is an early adopter crowd, but it's still a great way to kind of get some traction. Um, you know, it's not that expensive to get a Kickstarter campaign going, and it, it's a great way to get some funding and some credibility and. Mm -hmm. Get the word out there on the product. So, so well, it's an added value to to launching with it. Gotcha, gotcha. And uh, why why did you choose Kickstarter? I mean, there is some other platforms such as Indiegogo. Why did you guys uh, go towards Kickstarter? Um, I, I think Kickstarter just has the most traction right now in terms of these platforms. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think right now they're they're kind of leading the charge, so we, we obviously wanted to position it with the, uh, you know, with the best if we can. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. No, I completely agree. So, 
Did you have any trouble with admission onto Kickstarter? I know they, they have a very um, strict guidelines. Did you have any issues with that? Um, yeah, there, we, we actually had to go through a few uh, hurdles mm -hmm. to, to, to really kind of get the product. They, they had a very, uh, they have a, a very strict um, guideline process, especially for hardware, where mm -hmm. they don't want to see any sort of photorealistic demo or, or renderings or, um, you know, they want to, they want you to act, actually show where the product is currently at and, and how it's working. Okay. So, um, we had to really make sure we abided by all those rules. Do you have any advice for uh, hardware crowdfunders that are interested in going to the hardware space? Do you have any advice on yeah, that? I think, yeah, I think um, it, you know, it's very important to to really just be um, you know, real with where your, your product currently is, but then also, also make sure that you also kind of show the vision and be clear on on, you know, if something isn't working, it explained what is not working and, and how it can work in such a way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, you know, I, I think it's just the best policy is always to just to be honest with where you're at it and, and, um, okay. and just try to uh, uh, deliver the best, best experience on the, in the video. Gotcha. In regards to actually admission onto Kickstarter is, I mean, I know they want to see, so they want to see an actual prototype. Is that correct? Yes. So no, no three D rendering. Um, they, they will let you uh, see three D renderings, but it's got to be like development renderings. Okay. So okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about the actual campaign itself and the whole process going into it. Um, I know planning for the campaign takes up quite a much, quite a bit of time. How long did you take to plan it? Um, we planned for, uh, I mean, the kick, building the Kickstarter page definitely took the most work um, mm -hmm. of the campaign. Um, that took, I would say, two to three months to really put it together and refine it between the video and the content and all, generating all the assets. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we what, what we did the what, what planning was did on our set and this um, we read uh, a lot of online there were some good blogs that talked about you know how to approach the Kickstarter campaign I think Tim Ferriss had a nice article on it yeah how to hack the Kickstarter um, that was an interesting one correct yeah yeah so we, we we pulled a lot of little nuggets from there that mm -hmm. just little, useful tips that we found that applied to us. I mean, there's a lot of information there. I don't think you need to do everything, but mm -hmm. there's definitely some things like that are, that are useful. And uh, one of the things that we, we used was, uh, you know, definitely suing your own network and, and emailing or, you know, using MailChimp to generate mail lists was something that we uh, we spent a lot of time and we used Tim Ferriss's techniques to, to do that. Okay. So what was the most uh, time-consuming part of the planning? Was it the video? Yeah, the video and, and definitely the page generation. Mm -hmm. Like the content and the refinement of the wording and um, you know, just making sure that it aligns with everything that you're doing too. Do you have any advice for uh, video creation? Um, I mean, I've seen creative ones. I've seen videos that are straight to the point. I mean, there's some that are all over the board. Do you have any... Uh, no, yeah, no, I think you want to be you want to be a little bit different and unique in your video. Mm -hmm. um, but the, but what we did is we watched a lot of videos that we liked and a lot of the successful you know electronics or hardware um, you know videos like Pebble or uh, oh my god, there's just so many of them that yeah. we watched and we yeah. just kind of wrote down things that we liked and mm -hmm. built our own. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, so what, uh, and, and can you explain a little bit about where the money is going to be used for? Because you did, you know, essentially you raised over $150,000. Where, I mean, is there going to be more resources that you're going to need to purchase or, you know, where, where is the extra funds going? So it's, it's going to, 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 to make Ivy work better. Um, okay. and, and, and do more. Gotcha.
Gotcha. Okay, okay, so um, we know we know understand that crowdfunding campaigns take a lot of work. Um, and I know you have a company that you're running in the background. Were you able to manage the campaign and run your campaign at the same time? Yes, but it was, it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. Any um, you know tips and tricks on how to uh, how to manage that? Um, I, I think it was you know definitely put someone responsible for answering the uh, the back curse. Mm -hmm. And someone to own that responsibility because it is a, a pretty important job at the beginning of the campaign because uh, there's just a lot of questions and things that you didn't even think about um, that, that, that you need to have answers to. Um, so someone should be the point person on that, mm -hmm. and uh, um, and that can also you know free up your time to to, to you know to do what else you need whatever else you need to do. <laughs> Got you. So one of the most more important parts, it sounds like, is once someone backs the project, you know, a lot of the times they have questions that they need answered. Is having someone there that can immediately get back to them. Correct. Okay. Gotcha. So when uh, during the campaign, when did you when could you say? I got this. Like, when did you breathe a sigh of relief knowing that you reached your 40k? Um, when we, um, I think we reached it within just a few. Was it was like hours? It was not even that long into the campaign, mm -hmm. uh, um, which was very nice. And then we should nice to see the press and the traction and the market that we were getting and the excitement around the product because we've been working on this for. A while, and it was just nice to, to see the excitement. So, gotcha. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you were you, right out right after you launched the campaign. It's you guys pretty much hit that forty k, and then it was just about continually upping that number, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. And we noticed you didn't do any stretch goals. Was there a reason behind that? Yeah, we, we we did do um, we uh, a stretch goal, but um, it was just to add more features to the product. And um, you know, to be honest, we weren't really we really didn't know how to best utilize stretch goals. Um, mm -hmm. So that was one of the things that we didn't really see. We we noticed how some campaigns did it because they can add like a little paste or something to the product. But with that, you know, we really focused on just offering really good. Gotcha, gotcha. So, for the actual management of your campaign, did you guys use any specific tools or software for managing the campaign? Um, we used Mailchimp to mm -hmm. do the email blasting. We used uh, uh, we created a um, a really easy Kickstarter share page, which. Um, which was kind of nice on our website. So you can just go to like helloivy.com backslash Kickstarter mm -hmm. share. And that was a Tim Ferriss tip. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, that gave people the ability to like add it to their Facebook and post it to Twitter and just, you know, easily just share the product with their social media. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, we used, um, there was like a widget for Google Chrome. Uh -huh. um, but it really, it was kind of the, uh, I forgot what the name of it is, but it really, we really, I took, I just looked it up right now. Um, but that didn't really um, help that much. But Kick Track was something that we looked at a lot. Kick Track? Yeah, Kick, K I C K T R A Q. Yeah. It was kind of neat because they kind of projected where you're, where you're going to end. Ah, uh, I see. I see. Yeah. And, uh, and, um, okay, so what, um, you know, getting your, your press and getting, you know, the word out, obviously there's the Facebooks and the Twitter and, you know, the PR approach. What would you say the most effective method is for getting the word out? Um, I think if you can afford it, hire a PR team, okay. um, do a press release, um, build relationships with journalists or, or or, you know, people that, you know, write press. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, 
that's the, the best way to get the word out. Also, you know, virally spread it amongst your friends and just, mm -hmm. you know, pursue all distribution outlets. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, definitely. So, do you have any specific advice that you would give entrepreneurs looking to crowdfund their own products? Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I think in, in, in what regard, just the, the whole well, I, would say, or, I mean, I would say in both regards, you know, there's a crowdfunding aspect, but also in a, you know, entrepreneur mindset, you know, what kind of, what kind of mindset do they need to, you know, make a product, bring it to reality? Because a lot of times these are just small ideas. Well, you know, what, what, you know, where, what got you ticking? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, depending on what the project is and what you're trying to do, you got to obviously try to think of the people that can add value to the project and find those people. Mm -hmm. And I think Kickstarter does a great way of, of highlighting the story. You know, eventually when you find the right people to plug into it, um, you know, something magic happens. And, and, if, um, and if it kind of complements everyone's interest, then you obviously have the beginning of, of something. So um, it's just a matter of trying to drive that and, and see where it goes. And I think Kickstarter is a great tool to... Mm -hmm. To, to, to kind of get the uh, get the word out there on what your you and your team are trying to do. So. Gotcha. That's great. That's great. So your product is scheduled to ship in October. Is uh, do you plan to ship on time? Uh, we're gonna be a little bit late. Uh, we made some hardware improvements to the product, so we uh, we upgraded the Wi-Fi module because the Wi-Fi was not working well. Uh -huh. um, so now I do will have B, G, and N, mm -hmm. and so because of that hardware change, it, it forced us to actually um, make some some layout changes and cause some issues. And now we uh, uh, we're planning to ship uh, in the November December timeframe. Gotcha. Everyone will get them before Christmas. Oh, that's great. That's great. So would you yeah. say and in I mean, just keeping your backers in the loop is probably the most important aspect to a Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, I think it's important to, to, to keep them updated as time goes on. At least send an update at least once a month or every couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you want the updates to be to, to, to have some content and some meat in them. You don't want to just send an update to send one. Right. Um, so we try to send one at least every three to four weeks to kind of give an update on how we're progressing and and what's happening and um you know, people have been pretty receptive they get excited you know yeah. it, it makes them feel like they're a part of the journey yeah that's that's awesome so jonathan do you what would you say was you know how would you best describe your crowdfunding experience you know how how was it all in all um I, it's definitely it was um you know it was a I think it was a great experience. I think it, it accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. Um, you know, I think if you don't have a company running in the background, you can you can really do a lot and really put a lot of focus on just making this thing, you know, ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, if you do have a company running in the background, you can still use Kickstarter as a as a great tool or or just crowdfunding in general. Um, and uh, would you do anything? Uh, yeah, yeah. Would you do anything uh, differently? Um, would we do anything differently? Uh, I, no, I think that you can always do uh, more. You know, I think maybe we could have. Um, uh, you know, I think at the I think we could have definitely had someone, you know, position as the, the the person answering the messages at the beginning because I don't think we we realized who. How, how daring of a job that was going to be, so we were all kind of tackling it. Uh -huh. So I think that definitely, definitely position someone to kind of own that responsibility, oh, okay. um, you know, through the campaign and then after the campaign as well. Mm -hmm. um, and other than that, I, you know, I think uh, read Tim Ferriss's... <laughs> how to, right, right, how to hack Kickstarter. That's definitely variable, very valuable uh, article he wrote. So, uh, yeah. 
when can we expect the next Ivy product? <laughs> uh, well, that's, uh, that's, that's to be determined. Okay. All right. All right. All right. We're working on just get, we're working on just getting the first one out right now. <laughs> and now are you guys going to distribute that into, uh, department stores? In, uh, Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be, um, prominently featured in Office Depot, um, hmm. Staples. And Lowe's. Wow, congratulations. That's really awesome. Awesome, awesome. All right, Jonathan, so I think that uh, about wraps it up over here. Um, did you have any uh, any last uh, words of advice you wanted to add? Uh, uh, just uh, I think it's a great tool and, 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 and good luck. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, Jonathan, so that's about it. Um, Thanks for uh, taking some time today, and I uh, really appreciate it. And uh, we we'll hope to Thanks. hope to talk to you soon. Thanks for the call. Take All care. All right. Take care, Jonathan. Bye bye. Bye bye.